here from the Bogestead, and I am coming to y'all today because, well, actually tonight, but I'm going to be sharing with you guys how we are going to be storing our root vegetables for the winter. Part of having a garden, you have this harvest that you get, and the problem that I was finding when I was searching for methods of preserving your food through the winter, because the goal is to grow the food in the spring and the summer and the part of the fall, and then to be able to have enough to feed you and your family throughout the winter. But the problem I was running into is, well, how the heck am I going to preserve and store all of these things? Of course, I could can stuff. Carrots specifically require pressure canning. And so we are not quite to the place that we're ready to invest in all of the equipment that is necessary to pressure can, which is really just a pressure canner, let's be honest here. But in the meantime, I needed something right away. And so as I went to YouTube and went to, you know, Dr. Google and, and searched the interwebs to find out the best method for storing throughout the winter, well, the root cellar kept coming up. And I don't know if you're familiar with what a root cellar is, but it's essentially uh, a lot of houses back in the day used to have these root cellars. And essentially it's kind of a cool, like a basement. Some people use their basements, uh, but it was a means to store your food for the winter. Well, we don't have a root cellar. We don't live in a place that has basements. There's Texas is not, at least, especially in North Texas where we're at, having a basement is not something that is common. And so I was kind of in this pickle of, okay, well, we don't have a root cellar. We don't have the pressure caning. I have all of these carrots and these beets that we're fixing to harvest. What the heck am I gonna do with all of it so it doesn't go bad? Because of course you don't want it to go to waste. Actually found root cellar alternatives. Imagine that. So this is what we will be doing. This is what I'm gonna show you guys. So the piece of advice that I will walk away from this with that I will share with you as my lesson learned is that you don't have to have all the things that everybody says you have to have in order to make things work. So let's dive right in and I am just going to take you guys along for the whole process uh, on harvesting and preserving our carrots and the three beets that we harvested from this past season. Here we go. So first we harvest, make sure that you're harvesting before uh, you reach a 25 degrees Fahrenheit or negative four degrees Celsius. You wanna make sure that you harvest before then. Next, you're going to just brush the dirt off. Don't wash your carrots, don't peel them. You're just gonna trim the tops off and you're gonna leave about an inch of green at the very tippy toppy. Let your kids help you too. Feed the greens to the chickens. <laughs> Next, we are going to be using bedding. So I chose to use pine bedding for a couple of different reasons. Well, really just for one reason. So the main reason, you can use many different mediums to keep your, your vegetable um, preserved. I think sand, and it's just regular play sand, like what, we, what you would put in a sandbox was one thing. I think hay or straw was another one. Peat moss was another one. The reason why I chose animal bedding is because we needed, we are starting to deep bed our chickens and we had to buy the bedding anyway. And so we had plenty left over because I didn't have a ton of carrots that we harvested, but enough that I needed to be able to preserve. And so I was able to kind of get a two for one. So I was able to preserve the carrots using the pine shavings, and then we were able to take the rest of it and put it in the chicken coop to help deep bed the chickens to help keep them warmer uh, over the winter months. Okay, resume. Uh, so in the little water thingy, what do you call that thing? <laughs> I put water in there, okay? So the first thing you do is you want to put about an inch of your shavings or whatever medium you're using and you just want to moisten it. You don't want it dripping wet. You just want it kind of just a little damp. The next important thing is when you are layering in your root vegetables in there, you want to make sure they're not touching. So that is the most important part. You don't want them touching. So spread them out, layer them out. And then you're going to put another, once you fill up that layer, you're going to put another one inch of whatever medium you're using over it because as you pile them on top of each other, you don't want them to be touching. The next thing to note, if you saw there in the video, 
that I super time lapsed. And so now that I'm trying to do a voiceover, it's not working out very well for me because I talk way too much for my own good. But that's beside the point. So I kind of ran into a little bit of a conundrum. <laughs> so Ella wanted to help me. So we were putting the pine shavings into the bucket and we were layering in the carrots. And we, I went to go put in the top layer of pine shavings. And then I was went to go pour the water and I was like, wait a minute, I don't want to pour this water directly over the carrots. So then I was got my little container and I was like pouring the water over it and like swooshing it up and smudging it up in here and then dumping it over there, over the carrots. So we ended up doing, I think, three layers of carrots um, and I had like two or three beets that were thrown in there too. The bucket that I used is just a plastic bin that I got from Target for $4.99 or $5.99 from the holiday section. Uh, and I just used that. And then I busted out my label maker because who doesn't need a good label maker once in a while? I love a good label maker. And I basically just wrote what's in the bucket and the year. I don't know why I wrote the year, but whatever, details. So that is what you saw us do here. The lid stays on, tighten up. You know, I don't even think you actually really have to have a lid, honestly. I don't really know for sure, but I did it just because we plan to keep this bucket in the garage and I'll explain why at the end why we decided on the garage but we because we live in the country we have rats and mice and all of that kind of thing and I didn't want something to get into the bucket and have my carrots for their breakfast you know okay I mean there's not much to finish here except that me putting my fancy label on and Ella my sweet little camera girl following me and placing the carrots oh and of course, check me out as I clean up my mess. <laughs> Okay, so that was that. I know it was super exciting, but all that to say is, there, so the reason why we chose the garage is because Justin and I kind of tossed, I was like, well, we could put it on our back patio because that was one thing that a couple YouTubers had mentioned, a couple things that I had read had mentioned to put it on your back patio. And then the problem then we ran into is that we do get below freezing during the winter. Uh, we typically don't get anything less than 10 degrees on average, but anything less than, you know, I think it's less than 60 degrees, you wanna bring it in the house. We couldn't keep it in the house because obviously we keep the house above 60 degrees because it needs to be less than 60 degrees, but above freezing in order to maintain uh, good preservation for your root vegetable. And so, we thought, okay, well, where else could we put it that it can be temperature controlled, but that we're not having to pull it in and bring it in because if we put it out on the back patio, well, then we're just gonna bring it inside and maybe we were overthinking it, I don't know, but then uh, it was mentioned the garage and I thought, oh, well, that could work because our garage is somewhat insulated. So it doesn't get quite as cold as outside and it doesn't warm up right now. And at first my thought was like, oh, but it gets so hot in there in the summer. Well, duh, the carrots are gonna be gone by the summer. So that's like mute, that point is mute. So we decided on the garage. I chose to put it closer to the, to the house, thinking that it is probably a little bit warmer than over by the garage door, if you know what I mean, so. There you have it, folks. That's how you can preserve your root vegetables. So not just carrots, but things like um, your beets, parsnips, uh, what else, radishes, turnips, all of those things. Those root vegetables, you would all kind of store with the same process in mind. So I'm super excited to be able to have the opportunity to preserve this food for myself and my family. And it's not this great big harvest. It's not like I've got hundreds of pounds of carrots. And really and truly, some of the carrots are like some of the most piddly little things you ever saw. They're like real skinty and <laughs> But I still, we grew that. Like we did that. We dug the earth. We put in the seeds. We watered. We loved it. We waited on it. We, I mean, and 
What was so amazing about the carrots, let me just share this really quick little tidbit before I sign off with you guys. So as you hang out with us more, you'll find out more about our family and our history. Well, recently my mom passed away back in um, November, November 5th of 2020. And I had to go, she lived in Arizona and I'm the oldest. Um, and it was very sudden, very unexpected. She was very young, um, 57. And so I was kind of, you know, took the bull by the horn, so to speak, and kind of took control of planning everything and getting everything in order. My dad passed away two years ago. So this was very, just very kind of a traumatic situation for the whole family, of course. So I flew out there very last, you know, very suddenly and was gone for two weeks straight, two weeks. You know, and we had been knee deep in, in gardening and preparing the fall garden. And we kind of got, you know, we finally got it to where it was going. We were starting to kind of harvest from it. And you know, things were, we're getting ready for the holidays and then boom, life happened for us, right? So all that to say the garden went completely unattended for two weeks, if not longer than that, because then I came home and it was just like, I was in a state of shock. I remember going out there just to see what it was like. I think I was having like a really hard day. And to see the amount of the carrots, like from what they were before I left to what they were when I came home, like they kept growing. They kept growing and they kept providing sustenance essentially for our family. And it just, I'm very philosophical and I get very like, Woo, sometimes so you'll just have to pardon me and excuse me but I find a lot of linear things of life with the gardening side of homesteading which is why I love it so much but I just thought in the midst of this very difficult time where for me my world and my life kind of stopped and stood still as I was grieving my mom life was still continuing on in a different form and the cycle of nature and earth was still continuing on and we were able to reap the benefits of that harvest, even though I didn't do anything. All I did is I planted the seed, I watered it a few times, and then I let mother nature do its thing. And now I have a very small, but a very significant, but a very big, like it may be very small in, in quantity, but, and even in quality, let's be honest, but really in, quality as far as like my heart is so full to know that you know my hands and my husband's hands and my kids hands have been in that dirt and even though my heart was so broken and is so broken and is so sad it's also super grateful and thankful and blessed <laughs> as kind of cliche as that is it's very true because my garden has been a source of joy and humbleness through so many things that I've experienced this last year. And I'm so grateful for that. And I'm so grateful that I now get to share that with you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy, enjoy, enjoy it. I hope you enjoy this little video. Okay, I hope you enjoy the video. I gotta go to bed. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. Uh, I hope that you found some value. Obviously don't forget to subscribe, share with your friends, hit the like button, hit the bell, all the things. I don't know where the bell is at, but wherever it is, you should hit it. If you haven't watched our intro video, go check it out. I don't know why I'm pointing here. Maybe I can figure out a way to make it pop up like, and then you can just push it. Otherwise, I just looked really dumb doing that. Okay, I gotta go. Peace.